called equation of state. Uh, actually, this is the equation of state for the real gas. So, in my talk, first of all, I will talk on the introduction of the equation of state. What does it mean by the equation of state? Why is uh, why is it so important? And then I will talk about the equation of state for the perfect or the uh, ideal gases. From there, we will uh, come to know what is its limitation and how to incorporate the basic interaction of the real gases. And one of the plausible candidate of the equation of state for the real gas is the van der Waal equation of state. Then we will talk about the van der Waal equation of state, how he has modified the equation of state for the ideal gas, which kind of limitation uh, he has improved and how to take into account those real description of the real gases. Then I will talk how to get a heuristic derivation of the van der Waal equation of state and then I will talk about how to uh, derive van der Waal equation of state from more microscopic theory using the virial expansion or virial theorem and then I will talk about how to what is the use of van der Waal equation of state how to verify it experimentally and what is their drawback etcetera, etcetera. So, let me start it, what does it mean by equation of state. So, now I will uh, talk about what does it mean by equation of state. So, let me start it. Uh, imagine for the sake of simplicity a constant mass of gas that is a closed system in a vessel so equipped that the pressure, volume and temperature may be easily measured. If we fix the volume at some arbitrary value and cause the temperature to assume an arbitrarily chosen value, then we shall not be able to vary the pressure at all. Once V and T are chosen by us, the value of P at equilibrium is determined by nature. Similarly, if I uh, choose some other variables suppose pressure and temperature are chosen arbitrarily, then the value of V at equilibrium is fixed that is of the three thermodynamic coordinates pressure, volume and temperature only two are independent variable. That means, one I fix P and V how temperature varies, once I will if I will fix V and T how pressure varies or other way if I will fix P and T how volume varies. Okay. This implies that there exists an equation of equilibrium which connects the thermodynamic coordinates and which robs one of them of its independence. Such an equation called an equation of state which is a mathematical function relating the appropriate thermodynamic coordinates of a system in equilibrium. Here I want to emphasize something, equation of state always deals the relation between the thermodynamic coordinates when the system is at equilibrium. If the system is not at equilibrium, then you cannot talk about a relation or mathematical formulations between the thermodynamic coordinates. This is only true when the system is at thermodynamic equilibrium. Okay. So, now every thermodynamic system has its own equation of state although in some cases the relation may be so complicated that it cannot be expressed in terms of simple mathematical function, but always every system has its own equation of state. Okay. For a closed system, the equation of state relates the temperature to other, uh, to, to other thermodynamic variables. So, an equation of state expresses the individual peculiarities of one system as compared with other another system and must therefore, be determined either by experiment or by molecular theory. A general theory like thermodynamics based on general laws of nature is incapable of generating an equation of state of any system. In fact, an equation of state it should be derived from a more microscopic point of view which can mimic the experimental observation which you know since 100 years. Just like Charles law, Boyle's law, uh, uh, Graham's uh, Dalton's partial pressure law, Graham's diffusion law, these kinds of these are also equation of states and which you know since 100 and 100 years. 
this is the experimental fact, this is the observation. So, equation of state is an relation, mathematical relation between the thermodynamical coordinate which is derived from some molecular theory which will explain this, uh, this kind of physical observations. So, an equation of state therefore, is not a theoretical deduction from thermodynamics, but is usually an experimental addition to thermodynamics. It expresses the result of experiments in which the thermodynamic coordinates of a system were measured as accurately as possible within a limited range of values. So, finally, equation of state is therefore, only as accurate as experiment that lead to its formulation and holds only within the range of values measured. As soon as this range is exceeded, a different form of equation of state may be valid. An equation of state is a very vital uh, uh, mathematical relations between the thermodynamic coordinates. Sometimes actually equation of state is nothing but the free energy of the system. Suppose, if you want to study uh, the phase transition, suppose let us take ice to water, water to steam or other way around. If you want to study this kind of phase transition, which uh, regime of P, V, T, these kind of phases exist in nature. So, for that you need to have the equation of state for water, equation of state for uh, ice, equation of state for steam. Once you know the equation of state for individual phases around which you are looking for the phase transition, you need to have a good knowledge about the equation of state. So, now let me start the equation of state of any general gas. Sorry, here I want to uh, 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 I want to say something. Equation of state uh, can be for any solid, liquid, but in this talk uh, we will be talking the equation of state of a gas. In fact, equation of state for solid and liquid is comparatively complicated than equation of state of a rarefied gas. Reason is that interaction in solid or liquid is much more stronger. Uh, than the interaction among the constituent in the gas. So, uh, in that sense uh, uh, derivation of equation of state in solid or liquid is more complicated uh, than the uh, equation of state for a rarefied gas. Obviously, equation of state for a gas at a very dense gas again it will be complicated, but in our day to day life or for chemist. Uh, they are looking for the equation of state for a uh, uh, gases at low pressure or at high temperature. In that cases, equation of state is not so complicated. So, let me start it how the concept of equation of state arises from this beautiful observation which I am going to tell now. Okay. As we know, a gas is the best behaved thermometric substance because of the fact that the ratio of the pressure of a gas at any temperature, pressure of, of a gas at any temperature to the pressure of the same gas at the triple point, this ratio attains a value independent of the nature of the gas, because as both P and P T P, T P P T P means pressure at the triple point approach 0. So, this ratio attains a value independent of the nature of the gas. This is the remarkable observation uh, in the uh, gas. So, this limiting value of this ratio multiplied by 273.16 Kelvin was defined to be the ideal gas temperature T of the system at whose temperature the gas exerts the pressure P. So, this is the concept of ideal gas temperature by this observation and this ratio behaves universally to all gases. The reason for this regular behavior may be found by investigating the way in which the product P V of a gas depends on the pressure P. Okay. Suppose that the pressure P and the volume V of n moles of a gas held at some constant temperature are measured over a wide range of values of the pressure and the product P V where the molar volume small v is capital V by n, where capital V is the total volume of the system, n is the number of moles. 
is plotted as a function of p. So, experiments of this sort were first performed by Amagat in France in 1870 and later by Holborn and Otto in Berlin and by Kammerling once and by Kisam in Leiden. The relations between P V and P may be expressed for a real gas by means of a power series or technically it is known as the virial expansion which is of the form P V equal to A times 1 plus B P plus C P square plus dot dot. Uh, so, where A, B, C etcetera are called the virial coefficient A being the first virial coefficient B the second C the D etcetera that depend on which depend on the temperature and on the nature of the gases. So, these virial coefficients which depends upon the temperature as well as on the nature of the gases, okay. but we will come to know that A will not depend on the nature of the gas which will depend only on the temperature whereas, B, C etcetera they will depend on the nature of the gas their value changes from one gas to other gas. It means that virial second order or third order or higher order virial coefficient takes into account the molecular interaction among the constituent. Since, from molecular interaction changes from one description of gas to the other description of gas. So, A, B, C, D etcetera these virial coefficient changes from one gas to other gas. Okay. But we will find just now that A will depend only on the temperature of the system that I will show you. Okay. In the pressure range from 0 to about 40 standard atmospheric pressure, the relations between P V and P is practically linear. So, that only the first two terms in the expansion are significant, other terms are not so significant. So, I can neglect those higher order terms. Okay. In general, uh, the greater the pressure range, the larger the number of terms in the virial expansion. Usually, just you will see if the pressure range under which you are perform the, performing the experiment, if the pressure range are very small means 0 to about 20 or 30 standard atmospheric pressure, then the first or second term in the virial coefficient is sufficient to explain the experimentally observed value. But if you will go for the higher pressure range, then higher and higher order terms in the virial coefficients are needed to explain the experimental values. Okay. The remarkable property of the gas that makes them so valuable in the thermometry is displaced in the figure, okay, which is given in the site, where the product P V is plotted against P for four different gases, hydrogen, nitrogen, air and oxygen and they have uh, uh, they have this thing has been plotted for three different uh, temperature. First one at the top of this figure it is plotted at the temperature of boiling point P V versus P. Second middle of this figure is plotted P V versus P at the triple point of the water. Third one uh, lower uh, graph of this figure is plotted P V versus P at the uh, temperature of solid carbon dioxide. We have seen a remarkable observation in all three figures top, middle and bottom. What we have seen that as the pressure approaches 0, the product P V approaches the same value for all gases at the same temperature independent of the species of the chemical and depends only on the temperature of the gas. So, this is an remarkable observation. Let me tell you again, if you will plot P V versus P for any kind of gases, then you will see as uh, uh, pressure approaches 0 or P V A, then P V approaches the same value no matter uh, whether it is for the hydrogen gas or nitrogen gas or air or oxygen, it approaches a common value for any gas. So, this uh, observation from this crucial observation, it reflects that, that the first virial coefficient A is independent of the nature of the gas and depends only on the temperature of the gas. Thus, limiting case means P tends to 0, P V will take only the first term A, 
which is a function of temperature only independent of the gas. This ideal gas temperature T is defined as T is 273.16 degree Kelvin limit P T P tends to 0 P by P T P while volume is held constant. In that case temperature is defined as uh, 273.16 degree Kelvin times limiting value of P V by N by P T P V by N. If you will write in other way the in terms of molar volume then it will look like 273.16 degree Kelvin times limiting uh, times the ratio of limiting value of P V by limiting value of P V at the triple point. So, from this equation you can always write down that limiting value of P V at any temperature is nothing but limiting value of P V at the triple point by 273.16 degree Kelvin times temperature. So, that means and the bracketed term which is which looks like a constant term. So, the bracketed term is called the molar gas constant and is denoted by R. So, if you will uh, if you will substitute R as the uh, the ratio of limiting term of P V at the triple point divided by 273.16 degree Kelvin, then we will end up the beautiful equation which you know since 100 and 100 years P V equal to R T. In 1972, uh, beta quas determined limiting P V at 0 degree centigrade for oxygen to be around 22.4132 liter atom per mole or 2.27102 kilo joule per mole. Hence, the gas constant R was determined to have the value of 8.31441 joule per mole degree Kelvin with an uncertainty of 31 parts per million. In the 1973 recommendation of physical constant by the International Committee on Data for Science and Technology. However, measurements of volume in the determination of R by the method of limiting density are beset with the problem of adsorption of gas on the walls of the container. So, that restricts the that introduces the error in measuring the value in measuring that volume uh, uh, of one mole means one mole gas will occupy a volume 22 liter. So, to uh, measure this volume the air, the source of error is to how to measure the volume. In some cases because of the adsorption of the gas you cannot measure exact value of this volume that introduces some error. So, that is the reason people have made different kinds of experiment to get more and more accurate measurement of this volume. Furthermore, the uncertainty in the normal melting point of ice is greater than the uncertainty of the triple point of this water. For this reason, there is an improved method for determining a more precise value of the molar gas constant R. So, finally, substituting uh, for the molar volume uh, uh, small v which is nothing but the capital V by n, uh, capital V is the volume of the gas and n is the number of moles. If you will substitute it, then I will get it uh, this condition that uh, the equation of state of a gas in the limit of low pressures in the form is P V equal to n R T, which is the experimental equation of state for the ideal gas. So, limiting since limit p tends to 0 p v equal to a which is nothing but the r t. So, equation 1 looks like p v by r t equal to 1 plus b p plus c p square plus d p q and some other terms. The virial coefficient b, c and d etcetera play an important role not only in practical thermodynamics, but also in theoretical physics where they are related to the molecular properties of the system. As I have already told you in the low pressure limit only uh, P V equal to R T that means, you can neglect uh, the values of the virial coefficient that we will show you that the virial coefficient at the very low pressure limit are very small. So, you can neglect them, but uh, as far as you are interested in a uh, comparatively larger pressure range in their 
B, C, D, etcetera plays an important role and the idea of theoretical physics particularly statistical mechanics which plays an important role to calculate values of B, C, D from the basic fundamental interaction among the constituents. So, however, I am not going to describe uh, how to calculate B, C, D from the statistical mechanics approach, but I will talk about simply from the general physics point of view how to calculate the second order virial coefficient from the simple classical mechanics approach, which is just close to the virial, ex, virial theorem. Okay. Except at low temperature, so finally, to conclude this uh, observation, uh, except at very low temperatures, the virial coefficient are quite small as shown in the table 1, where the virial coefficient are given for nitrogen in the temperature range 150 to 500. Uh, uh, Kelvin. So, this is the table through which you will come to know that at uh, very large temperature the virial coefficient makes are very small. So, or at low pressure which are the virial coefficient are small that tells that the ideal gas equation of state which is good well and enough in the low pressure and high temperature limit, but as you will go away from the low temperature low pressure limit then you need to introduce some higher order virial expansion. Okay. So, now let me start uh, 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 how to get the equation of state for the real gases or imperfect gases. Okay. First of all, uh, this is the most complicated thing in the theoretical physics, but in uh, this lecture I am not going to talk about the uh, real equation of state or equation of state for the real or imperfect gases. What I am going to tell you that uh, how to uh, uh, I am going to tell you a heuristic derivation of some equation of state which almost takes into account the uh, description of the real gases in a very schematic way. However, nowadays there are lots of theoretical derivation which tells you how to get this derivation uh, which is already done long time back by van der Waals. Okay. So, now people are able to derive this van der Waal equation of state from the more fundamental theory uh, which is known as the statistical mechanics. Okay. So, let me start how the van, how van der Waals himself derived this equation of state which is claimed to uh, uh, claim to mimic uh, for the real gases. Okay. The van der Waals equation of state is an equation of state for a fluid composed of particles that have a non-zero size and pair wise attractive interparticle forces. Exactly, ideal gas equation of state assumes two things let me tell you, although I have already talked about in my earlier lectures many times. When, when I talked about the kinetic theory of gases that time I have already or Maxwell distribution of speed that time I repeatedly told ideal gas, ideal gas means there are two assumptions they have already taken. First, the atoms or molecules behave as a point like objects and second thing there are no interactions among the constituent of the uh, gas. Now, somebody could ask that how you can talk about the ideal gas equation of state P V equal to N R T, where T is defined as the equilibrium temperature. If there is no interaction among the constituent, how do we get the equilibrium temperature? I have already told it, but not in a lengthy way, but let me repeat it again. In ideal gas concept, the concept of equilibrium temperature has come through the collisions of atoms with the container of the wall. That brings the system to an equilibrium and then the concept of equilibrium temperature is uh, being justified. But uh, now, how to get the equation of state for the real gas? Now, let me start. Is it true that atoms or molecules they are uh, point like objects? No, it is not true. So, first thing you have to uh, improve these two concepts. First, they are, they are finite size, although they are very small compared to the size of this volume, uh, size of this uh, system, but still they are not 
a point like objects that gives rise a concept of excluded volume approximation I am going to tell you in a couple of minutes. Second point as we have assumed that in ideal gas equation of state people have uh, they are moving like a free particle they are and there are no interaction potential present among the constituent of the uh, systems. So, is it any possible to take an attractive interactions between the constituent of the system? So, so idea of Van der Waal equation of state is of twofold. First, uh, they are not point size particles, so you cannot put as many particles as you want in a given system, which gives you gives rise the concept of excluded volume approximation. Second point that uh, there are some interactions present in, uh, among the constituent of the gas may be between the atoms or between the molecules. So, he has attacked these two points and he has derived, he has incorporated these two points which lands up the concept of Van der Waals equation of state. So, now let me start. The equation of state for perfect gases was deduced theoretically based on the assumption that the molecules were point masses and no interaction potential was acting between them. It is evident that molecules have small, but finite size and they interact with each other with an attractive force. So, taking these two factors into account, Van der Waals in 1873 deduced the equation of state for uh, the imperfect gases or for the real gases. What are the crucial assumptions he took? Van der Waals, uh, Waals made the simplifying assumptions first, the molecules are hard sphere of some diameter sigma, it is not a point like particle. They interact each other with a weak attracting forces. So, these are the two simplifying assumptions, which are which are the which are the deviating part from compared to the ideal gas equation of state, where molecules have been treated as a point like objects and there are no interactions present among the constituent. So, if you will uh, uh, take into account these two assumptions made by Van der Waals, how to change the equation of state, how to change the ideal equation of state. Okay. So, first I am going to incorporate uh, the finite size effect, which is known as the excluded volume approximation. Effect of force of repulsion between molecules, which is known as the excluded volume approximation. However, nowadays there are some field theoretic uh, 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 methods have come up in the literature, which where people have constructed the partition function uh, in the statistical mechanics formalism uh, right from the beginning for the finite size particle. Okay. But however, we are not following that thing, we are following in a very trivial, in a very schematic way how the finite size effect, uh, uh, how the finite size effect of the molecules, how it is going to affect the uh, ideal equation of state. Let us take a volume V of a gas contains n molecules, where uh, n is the Avogadro number. The volumes of the gas occupy a finite volume, the molecules of the gas occupy a finite volume in space. Therefore, the volume available for molecules to move freely is less than the volume of the gas. This is the excluded volume approximation. That means, total volume are not available for the molecules, which constitute a system. This is the basic idea. So, now let me start it. First of all, let me put one molecule in a uh, system, how much volume he can avail. Then I put second molecule, how much volume is left for the second molecule, then put the third, fourth and uh, ultimately, if I want to put Avogadro number of molecules, how much volume is left. Okay. So, let us suppose that we put these molecule one at a time into a cubic box of length L such that V equal to L cube. 
since the molecule can come no closer than sigma by 2, sigma is the diameter of the molecule uh, to the wall of the box. Then the volume of the box available for the center of the first molecule to move is only L minus sigma whole cube. Okay. When the second molecule is added, the center of the second molecule is restricted to move in a volume L minus sigma whole cube minus 4 by 3 sigma cube. That means, as you are inserting more and more molecules to the system, so the volume in which its motion is restricted is uh, decreasing that is known as the excluded volume. Because it may not come closer than sigma to the center of the first molecule. So, that is the reason the volume available for the second molecule is less than uh, the volume expected in the ideal gas approximation. So, this process is repeated until all n molecules are placed in the box. So, the effective volume available for the center of a molecule to move is V effective is equal to L minus sigma whole q into n by 2 into 4 by 3 pi sigma q, which is nothing but the V minus B, where I have neglected uh, 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 some terms, which take which tells that sigma volume of a single molecule is much much lesser than the volume of the total system. So, where B equal to 2 by 3 pi n sigma q is called the co-volume of the molecules and is equal to the 4 times the volume of the hard sphere molecules. So, then equation 1 uh, uh, will be modified as uh, P into V minus B equal to R T. So, that means, the ideal gas equation of state will be modified uh, from P V equal to R T to P into V minus B equal to R T, where B is the correction for the volume of the molecules, which is known as the excluded volume. So, now let me take into account the second part of this uh, uh, of this crucial assumptions where which Van der Waals took. Second part of the assumptions is that there are uh, still weak interaction present among the uh, among the uh, constituent of the system, uh, there are weak interactions between either atoms or molecules. Basically, now we know this is nothing but the Leonard Jones potential, okay. but anyway I am not going to tell all these things right now. What is the idea of the second part, effect of uh, uh, force of attraction between the molecules? Idea the way Van der Waals took is very simple, okay. let me talk you first, then I will uh, show you from my transparency. First is, suppose you take a molecule in the bulk of the system, you see that there are all kinds of forces acting on the molecule from all sides. If you calculate the net force on the molecule which is in the bulk of the system, net force will be the resultant force will be 0. Now, suppose you take a molecule in the on the surface of, of the system, then uh, you see that it has uh, large number of neighbors uh, uh, from the side of the bulk, but there are uh, small number of neighbors uh, uh, from the surface, because that means it does not have sufficient amount of neighbor. So, that tells that the resultant force of a molecule which is on the surface is not 0 and the net force is directed inwards. So, that causes that uh, the resultant force is not 0 when a molecule is sitting on the surface of the uh, container, okay. that is the idea. Okay. Now, let me uh, show you how to incorporate this idea in a mathematical form. So, let us now consider the effect of the cohesive force says of attractive interactions between the molecules. This effect is not appreciable when the distance is large. A molecule in the interior or bulk of a gas experiences forces in all direction and hence the resultant force acting on it will be the 0 as I have already told you. 
However, when a molecule is near the surface of the container, where it has more neighbors at one side than at the other, as a result it will experience a resultant force directed inwards. That is the catchy point of this derivation. Due to this cohesive force, the pressure P of the gas on the wall of the vessel is less than the actual pressure in absence of the cohesive force. Okay. So, now let me uh, uh, say if delta P be the cohesive pressure acting per unit area of the surface, then instead of equation 1, we get the following equation for the pressure. That means, uh, uh, or pressure will be less than the ideal gas pressure. That means, P equal to R T by V minus B minus del P or P plus delta P equal to R T by V minus B. So, the pressure acting on the layer near the walls from the side of the molecules of the gas is equal to the force acting on the wall by the molecules on a unit surface of the layer. So, this force is proportional to the density n of the molecules. On the other hand, the number of molecules in the layer itself near the wall is also proportional to n. So, hence delta P is a proportional to n into n that means n square. So, delta P is proportional to n square, where n is the density of the gas, uh, which is nothing but the total number of molecules by total volume of the system capital N upon V. So, therefore, delta P is proportional to 1 by V square or proportionality constant is A, which is nothing but the A by V square. If you will substitute the value of delta P in the equation number 2, so, then you will get some equation of the state for the real gas, where A is a constant which depends on the nature of the force of attraction between the molecules. So, finally, thus the external pressure on the gas is increased by A by V square. So, using the result of delta P which is A by V square. So, you can write down P plus A by V square which is nothing but the R T by V minus B or other way P plus A by V square into V minus B equal to R T. This equation is the celebrated equation of state for the real gas, which is nothing but the Van der Waal equation of state. It takes into account both forces of attraction as well as repulsion between the molecules. So, this equation was first given by Van der Waals in 1873. In the following section, we shall deduce this equation rigorously using the Virial theorem. So, before proceeding to its rigorous derivation, let me summarize this heuristic derivation of the Van der Waal equation of state, which he himself had done it in long time back and he has got the Nobel Prize in 1910 for this famous work of this equation of state. So, that means, P has been increased by, uh, uh, by, uh, uh, by the attractive interaction may be which is weak among the molecules, whereas V have been reduced by taking into account the repulsive interaction between the molecules which have come in form of the excluded volume concept.